Welcome to the Philip Wiley Show. Take a look behind the curtain of professional hacking and hear compelling discussions with guests from diverse backgrounds who share a common curiosity and passion for challenges and their job. And now, here's your host, offensive security professional, educator, mentor, and author, Philip Wiley. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Philip Wiley Show. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, I've got Sean Alexander joining me today. We've known each other for over 20 years. He was my personal trainer at one point uh, when he owned the, the gym called The Gym here in Dallas, Texas. And we know each other from there. We've been in contact over the years. And recently we reconnected. Uh, I'm working out at a new gym where he trains at. And he was sharing his story. He's got an interesting story because Sean has a really interesting background. He's been a personal trainer for many years. Uh, I'll let him get into the details of his bio. But when he shared uh, this new story about his mindfulness journey through meditation, it was really cool to see. It's something I'm interested in. And one of the reasons I think this is a good good uh, topic for the cybersecurity industry is a lot of people are catching on to needing mental health and self-care because, you know, Cybersecurity can be really stressful, and nowadays people are dealing with a lot of, you know, mental issues, and a lot of things came up like through the pandemic and stuff. So it's really brought the attention to people that this is something that's that's needed. So I think this would be a good, good episode, interesting topic. So welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you, Philip. And uh, like I said, I've never done a podcast, so this is a fun adventure for me. Cool, and, it's good. Uh, so uh, probably the most important thing I can tell you right now is this whole lifetime uh, adventure of mine started when my mother told me I was fat when I was about seven years old. <laughs> so, you know, our parents, you don't realize the things you say to kids that'll make a big difference, but it started me on this whole lifetime of trying to be this bigger than life character. Um, you know, I was kind of in sports and stuff to begin with. I, I was trying to make the U.S. ski team. I grew up in Vermont and skiing was my big thing, but then, you know, I'd reached my goals with that. I made the U.S. team uh, from 76 to 80. Then I went in the Marines because I had to prove myself as be a real man and then, <laughs> you know, served in the Marine Corps for uh, six years. Then I went to school and the whole time I was really getting into the whole weightlifting and bodybuilding thing because to me that was the probably the best way to show my, um, my prowess, I guess you'd say, to the world. So got into the competitive bodybuilding and um, some little bit of powerlifting, not like you, but few meets, but uh, the bodybuilding was my thing because I figured that if I, the way I looked, it would really be my calling card out to the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, I competed for about 23 years and um, reached the levels that I wanted to reach. But in order to do that, I had to take my body to places where most people don't take them, which is with uh, not only the training and the massive quantities of food, but it was with the drugs that I took and the mm -hmm course anabolic steroids and um, looking back on it you know I'm not I don't I don't regret anything that I ever did um, because I think everything happens for a reason everything's for a purpose and that was my you know that that took me to the places I needed to go but it also took my body to places where it shouldn't have gone and um, I eventually years and years down the road suffered the consequences of it and um, had uh, the ill-fated um, death by steroids and um, my body just started shutting down. I had uh, my gallbladder died in, inside of me pretty much and I didn't know it because I didn't go to the doctor because I didn't want to know what was really wrong with me and I ignored it until I just dropped and what happened was as soon as they went inside of me uh, they realized I had sepsis and the sepsis had started to go through my body and my organs started to shut down and I had to be resuscitated so that was an interesting venture and so um, after that all happened, after I spent months and months uh, not able to work and in the hospital and going through uh, all kinds of wound treatment, um, I had been into meditation and mindfulness before, but not to the extent that this whole new experience of death um, brought me to, because it really brought on this whole curiosity of, okay, where do, where do we go? And how much of all this is really, it just, I, at that point, I had this really strange feeling like this is all just kind of happening in my mind. And I kind of see the mind almost like, you know, uh, it's like a computer system. You know, you've got the brain, the brain is the hardware, 
and then you've got the thoughts and the emotions and, and the processing going on, the whole mind working inside. The mind, I can't say it's inside because I don't know where it is, but the mind working, it's kind of like the computer program. But I have always felt like there's something even deeper underneath it, something that's always there instead of, you know, we're just, you know, we're here and then we just disappear. So I think truly that this, everything that I, have done in my life from you know accomplishments to you know all the the events in my life have led me to this understanding and this understanding is my own personal understanding and my own personal experience um, that I'm really excited to to tell people about because it's so simple and just this knowledge of knowing who you are is an amazing thing. It just really wakes you up, and it's not a religious thing. Um, you don't even have to look at it as being a spiritual thing. It's just, it's just there. There's something underneath all of it, and it's so easy to experience, and it's so easy to experience and so in our face every single day that nobody ever thinks about it. They just don't even realize what it is. And um, what I'm talking about my discovery was is that I noticed that there has to be something listening to the little voice in our heads. There has to be something that's aware of our emotions, aware of our thoughts, aware of all that. And I learned this through my many, many years of studying meditation. I've gone off and studied uh, with an Indian yogi, and I've done all the chanting, and I've done you know pretty much every kind of... Um, every kind of thing you can do to enhance your consciousness. But it's even more simple than I ever thought because we have this, this base underneath of everything. I'll call it a base. When you're awake, there's something that's aware of your experiences because as I'm in, even in this room looking at you, everything's coming through my senses, through my eyes, my ears, my nose, everything is going through my senses. But my senses are, they're, they're constantly changing, but there's something underneath that's aware and listening, almost like, you know, like a, an internal program of a computer system. It's always there during the day because I'm aware completely right now of everything. When I go to sleep, or when you go to sleep at night and you dream, how do you know you had a dream? you're aware of it. If you have a deep sleep, you're not aware of anything. You're just aware of, a, of, a, of an emptiness when you wake up. You're like, wow, that was great. I slept so good. How do you know you slept real well or slept deep? Because there's this awareness of it. So there's this constant one thing that's always there all the time, ever present, no matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, it's always there and it's inside of everybody. And I think it's a really special thing. I think it, it's something that when you go in and you quiet your mind, because that's what a lot of people now are starting to understand how important it is to kind of to uh, shut down the system mm -hmm. and let it reboot, <laughs> meaning yeah. your mind, to let it become quiet. And so I notice every time I do that, that there's this essence, this, this stillness inside. And it's amazing and peaceful. And it's, a, it's really become probably the most important thing in my life because it's there all the time and I notice it now. And I never used to notice it before. And when I place my attention on that awareness, it brings me to a place where I don't have angry emotions. I don't react to things. I take action to things, but I don't react. So everything is more calm and more peaceful. And um, I meditate every day, no matter what, even if it's five minutes sitting in my car before I come into the gym, because it just clears everything out and it 
puts me in a, in a real quiet, peaceful place, and it makes me be able to think better during my day. Things come up faster. If I need a solution to a problem, it's instantaneous. If I, if it, if I approach it from an empty mind, instead of just having all kinds of things twirling through my mind, I just let it become completely open and the right answer always comes to me. It's just, and I never knew this was possible. Like I never knew. It's almost like we are connected all the time. No, it's, it's not like we are. We are connected mm -hmm. to something all the time. Every single one of us. That's why, you know, you see someone, you go, you know what, I just thought about you. And there you are. Or you'll think about somebody and they'll call. We're, there's this connection through consciousness of everyone. Every single person is this same one consciousness, one awareness, you know, and, and we pull from that. This is where everything comes from, all ideas, everything. This is why, you know, I always think it's funny when we're watching TV and you'll see something like on Star Trek and you go, oh my God, we have those things now. They're teleport, they're using teleportation now. We, you know, we're, everything you see in the movies comes true. I saw a, uh, the King of Bahrain the other day in a video with his new bodyguard. There's a seven something million dollar um, artificial intelligence robot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the Terminator, you know, the <laughs> robot walking through, through a building with him. I couldn't believe it. It was really pretty cool, but it's kind of scary at the same time. Where did that idea come from? How, why do things always start on television or in movies and all of a sudden they become real? You know, where are these things, what, what is the source of all this information that we are downloading constantly? Where does it come from? Well, I know now that it, it comes from this consciousness, this collective consciousness that we all share. And um, I see us being like little computer terminals walking around, constantly downloading the information that we need. And then we need to just reboot once in a while, just reboot and clear it all out. Um, so that's kind of like where, where I'm coming from. I hope that wasn't too long an introduction. No, but. no, not at all. One of the things I find interesting is when you talk about how people come up with these ideas that we're connected to something. One of the things that really got me thinking a while back is look at some of the ancient times, some of the math and physics they came up back with back then. How did they come up with Exactly. That? Where did because that Because there were so many from? people, not to say these people were, but there were a lot of illiterate people who couldn't read or write. But yet these, there's people out there that was creating this stuff. Where did they get that from? Because the people that first came up with that, how did they get that? You know, mm -hmm. it just really makes you wonder what they're connected to, where they got that inspiration from to do that. I mean, oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I was watching a show last night. It was a documentary about the, the pyramids and this archaeologist, he's an Egyptian archaeologist, um, is discovering all these new pyramids in the desert and going in and going into the, into the tombs and the hieroglyphics and the things and the, the art and just, it's just amazing. It's so far beyond what we could ever imagine somebody, you know, four or 5,000 years ago would be producing and how did they do it? You know, how did they create these things? And then, you know, when you see the, the drawings and the hieroglyphics and, you know, there's, there are definitely images that promote a thinking towards a higher intelligence that, assisted them or they were drawing it from somewhere to get be able to to have the ability to solve the problems and build the things that they built back that far you know with mm -hmm. with technology and things that we don't even have now you know cutting stones with with laser precision that we can't do now yeah. you go how do they do that you know we'll never know that's like how many civilizations have probably been on this planet that we don't even know about. They're probably the bottom of the ocean or whatever. I think it's just, everything just keeps washing over and over and over. And all the time there remains this one awareness feeding itself through every single person, every single animal, every single insect, because everything is aware. It's all aware. It never goes away. It's like, and what is awareness? You know, awareness is can't even really describe it it's awareness is a knowing mm -hmm. it's a knowing um, just a just a knowingness a knowing and if you put your finger in front of a bug the bug is aware of your finger it doesn't have the same kind of awareness that I do because its brains not the same developed but it's aware it has this this knowingness hey I'm gonna get away from this person 
animals. We know animals are aware. They're they're aware of their they're they're conscious. They're mm -hmm. aware of their their environment. They're aware of everything. You know, we are aware. I'm aware of you. You're aware of me. You're aware of your dreams. You're aware of your thoughts. You're aware of your body. Now, here's the interesting thing about it. This is what really kind of blew me away when I started thinking about this. We know from quantum physics that things cannot things cannot exist without an observer. Something has to be aware of everything in order for anything to exist. And quantum physics says basically if you don't see something, it's gone. We create it instantaneously through all the different scientific quantum physics speak that I'm not going to even go into. But I cannot be anything that is an object of my awareness. For instance, if I'm holding my phone in my hand, it is an object of my awareness. I know that I am not that phone. So anything that I am aware of cannot be me. I'm aware of, for instance, the moon. If I see the moon, I'm aware of the moon. We'll start big and work, work our way down. I'm aware that I'm on this planet called Earth. I'm aware that I'm in Dallas, Texas right now with you. I'm aware that I'm in this room, so I can't be anything in this room. I'm aware of my body. So in reality, according to this thinking, I can't be my body. The real me cannot be my body if I'm aware of it. I have thoughts are an object of my um, awareness. I can't actually be my thoughts. Oh, it's coming. They'll say, well, it's coming from your brain but I'm aware that I have a brain. So there is this awareness that's always there, that we're always, we're always, we're aware of everything. Now looking at it from a bigger picture, in order for everything to exist, there has to be something aware of it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if little me is aware, you know, has, is aware of stuff, there has to be an overall awareness. Well, I just said, I'm, also, I'm aware of everything. You too mm -hmm. are aware of everything. So we are both aware of everything. So the thing that is aware of everything can't be any different than the, the awareness that's in us. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> gets, a little, gets a little deep there, but it's mm -hmm. really very simple when you think about it. But it's a subject-object relationship. And that's quantum physics. It's like... You know, does a tree make a noise in the forest if nobody hears it fall down? Well, the answer is no. It does not make any noise. Scientists have already said that because there's nobody to hear it. We, we create it through our, through our sense of hearing. We create everything through our senses. Without our senses, we can't experience the world. But what is it that's underneath aware of our senses? This pure awareness. And so that's what meditation really, because meditation is not really a thing that you do. That's a misnomer. It really is. I learned this from uh, my um, yogi spiritual teacher, his name is Acharya Sri Yogesh, and he came from India. He is an amazing, and I have to say he is an enlightened being. And he one time said he was getting a PhD in India on about meditation, and he left the program because he said, there is no such thing as meditation. We are that. We are that silence inside. We just cover it up with a lot of stuff. We cover it up with thoughts and we cover it up with emotions and we cover it all up with everything. So we think we're in our head. We think we're, we're in our mind and we're this little encapsulated existence and we're, we're these little tiny poor human beings that have to struggle and survive and then you know and then we just die but my experience says that that's not true my experience says that we are way bigger than that because if i'm able to be aware of everything and the thing that's aware of everything for everything to exist has that is that same awareness i think i'm probably a little bit bigger than this human body of mine Mm -hmm. You know, so well, you think about you hear about near death experiences and outer body the outer body experiences people have when they die. So that really makes you think that there's something beyond just this physical yep. body. Thousands and thousands of people who have had near death experiences 
were aware of everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. That same awareness that they have when they're supposedly in their body never leaves them. It's still there. And these, there's thousands of cases of that. You know, so take it for what you want. Um, what it all boils down to really though is if you can find a way to sit quietly in a room for a little while and just watch your thoughts and see how they come and they go. Notice how you have no control over your thoughts. Not like you're, when you're hacking into a computer, you know, you're in control and all that. Mm -hmm. Hack into your mind, hack in there and, and notice your thoughts and, and see how many come and how many go and try and control them. You can't control them mm -hmm. because we are not our thoughts. Our thoughts come from this giant, we'll call it a cloud or, you know, this of consciousness, collective consciousness. It just, they just pop into our mind. We think we take possession of them. We think they're ours, mm -hmm. but they're not just like our body. You know, tell me one thing today inside your body that you made happen. Nothing. Yeah. Your heart beats all day long. You don't think about it one bit. Your lungs are breathing. You've got down to the cellular level, the atomic level, all these things happen in your body. You don't have any control over them at all. Everything's just happening. Just like everything outside is ha just happening. It's all just happening. But we are this awareness that's underneath it all, just watching it all happen. We think we're really involved in it and making things happen, and we are to some extent in your lives, but really, are you? Are all the things that happen, you know, us driving here today, you know, I got here just fine, but I didn't even have to think about it. I just kind of ended up here and here yeah. we are doing this thing I've never done before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about stuff that I never really, you know, I'm scared to talk to most people about because yeah. most people could really, they're not ready to hear this no. kind of yeah. stuff yet. They don't understand it. And you have to start really low and you, not low, you just start really easy and just start by quieting your mind. Just, you know, and then. See how good it feels. It feels really good to, to just let it go and just relax. And why do you think people read a book? They read a book to take their mind off of other things. And mm -hmm. then, of course, they're, they're just substituting and putting it in here. But you get done a hard work day or even you go on vacation. What's the nicest thing to do? And you get to vacation, you get to the beach. You just want to lay down. Oh, I don't have to think about anything right now. Mm -hmm. It's like pure ecstasy. Yeah. You can do that every single day. You don't need to go to the beach. I go to the beach literally every day by just emptying my mind and not thinking about anything. Driving to work in the morning at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm literally completely empty. I'm not thinking about my day. I used to be thinking about it, and I was so stressed out by the time I got to the gym, so stressed out at who I was going to have to train, what I was going to have to do, get people ready for competitions, just whatever. Um, or even when I was a school teacher, it was even worse. I'd drive to school, I was like, oh my God, I don't know how I'm gonna make another day with these kids. <laughs> but now, after I've learned this, I drive to work and I'm just aware of everything. I'm just, I'm just going along and it's just nice. It's just really very quiet and peaceful. And then when I get here or get wherever I'm going, um, everything's not chaotic like it used to be things don't bother me and then sometimes I'm a human being I get tested and things mm -hmm. happen and I get upset and I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa why am I getting upset what is that gonna do it's not gonna help anything let me not react let me take action um, so that's the first thing just to try and quiet the mind a little bit and then if it feels like something if it feels good to you which it more than most likely will there's so many places you can go to get information on different types of meditation, you know, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, one that I like doing a lot of times with people is I, I teach them yoga nidra. And that's where you're lying down on your back in a nice, comfortable position. And I take them through the different body parts and just say, bring your awareness to your right foot, to your right knee. And just bring them through the whole body. And most people, after I get, you know, I'm into about for a minute, they're asleep. But mm -hmm. it's not a deep sleep. It's a almost like a hypnotic type of sleep. They still hear me. They still are picking everything up. 
<clears throat> but they're in a, in, a, in a state of a deep meditation. And you can do that yourself. There's YouTube videos out there for Yoga Nidra. I have one on Yoga Nidra. Um, Sean Alexander Yoga Nidra. And it's on YouTube. And just I put it out there for people just to do. Just to yeah. have something to use. But it really... Um, it does help to just start very simple with the meditation. And like I said, just sit, and sit down for a couple of minutes and see how many times you think in, in a minute. How many different thoughts do you have? And where, where do they come from? Where do they go? <clears throat> and that's the biggest question I really wanted, wanted to know from myself is where did I come from? What the thing that feels like me inside? Because, you know, as I've watched my body change over the years, I've watched my hair start falling out and the whole aging process. But I don't know about you, Philip, but I don't feel any different than I did when I was a little kid. Yeah. Like the same, I still have this feeling that the thing in, that is powering this body, the thing that I consider myself to really be that never changes, is always there. And it's always been there and it's, it can't change. So... I want to know where that came from, and I want to know who I am. I want to know who you really are, mm -hmm. because I know that you're not this body. Yeah. Like, I know that now. I know that nobody walking around is their body, and that's what makes me be able to get along with people so well now, because I look at every single person as being a different version of myself. You take away the thoughts. You take away the ego, the ego being who they really think they are. You know, all the, the programming that's mm -hmm. taken place from the time you're a little kid when your parents say, you're a boy or you're a girl. This is what boys do. This is what girls do. Mm -hmm. This is what you do when you grow up. You have to work. You have to have a career, blah, 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 all these things. We get programmed from the time we're little kids all the way through our lives from people, from religion, from media, from everything, we get programmed. But what is it that's getting programmed? What's, mm -hmm. what's that thing that gets born in there that's completely silent and untarnished and it's shapeless and it's formless and it's, it's gotta be infinite because it doesn't have any shape and it's, you know, is, when you look at awareness, see if you think to yourself, am I aware? You can try that and the people listening say, think to yourself right now, am I aware? And see where it takes you. It ta you are aware. It takes you to this place. It's like an essence. It's like a silence. And that is the way a baby's face looks. They're just, when a baby's born, they're just, or even a little animal, little, little animals when they're first born, mm -hmm. they just have this, this innocence inside of them. And then life happens and there's this programming that happens all through life. And so what I'm doing and what I've been doing for the last many years is unlearning everything. I'm in my unlearning phase. I'm letting go of everything. I've discovered that, you know, I've had all the material things I need in my life. I've, you know, and, and I decided I don't need them anymore. I've been giving stuff away over the years because I just don't need it. There's not a thing in the world that I would buy right now if I wanted, if there were, you know, I had money that I really wanted to buy something. I can buy anything, I just don't want it. I don't need anything. Because finding this thing inside of us, inside of me, has changed that. And it's more important to me to develop that now than it is to deal with material things. I, yeah. I just don't care. You know, it's like it just took that desire away. It's more important for me to figure out who I really am, you know, inside. And um, and this all started from my mom telling me at seven that yeah. I was chubby. Yeah. <laughs> like this yeah. whole this whole path of my life, every single thing, when I look back, I can see how something has been moving me mm -hmm. through my life, all these paths and things happening, the crazy things, like even owning, you know, a gym. Like I was a teacher at the time, training people at, on the side. And, you know, I had a little bit of money in the bank, but somehow I knew someday because I was bodybuilding and I was really into it, one of my dreams was to own my own gym. I didn't know how that ever happened, but 
I was even afraid to go into when I first moved here. I was like 260 pounds, a bodybuilder, and I was intimidated to go into a hardcore gym here in Dallas because I didn't know what it was going to be like. I just had like this anxiety thing back then. Mm -hmm. And it finally took me being in Dallas about two years before I walked into the gym, the gym, it was called the gym, yep. where we yep. and I used to train. Yeah. And uh, started training some people there. And then one day, the owner, my friend Randy, walks up and asks me if I want to be his partner. And I said, how much? It was the exact amount of money that I had to the penny. Craziest thing. And like, I didn't know that was going to happen. That was like one of my life dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, I somehow that I manifested that. We manifest everything. We don't understand most people that we are connected to this to this force that's keeping our body alive and it doesn't care what we get. It doesn't yeah. care. We bring the things to us by our mind and by our intentions. We we attract things. It's called the law of attraction. Everybody's heard of that. It's interesting how that works because one of my old former powerlifting training partners used to say because I was so determined in powerlifting, he would say I would just will things to happen. I mean, it wasn't exact, but to some degree, it almost seemed that way. At yeah, times. some power of manifestation. And I, I look back on my whole entire life and I see how it worked. I mean, my family was not, not rich when we got into skiing. In fact, you know, I grew up in Vermont and I got into skiing as a little kid. Uh, but we had, we had to do cross country because we didn't have enough money to ski downhill. And mm -hmm. At first I was like, ah, oh, cross country. But I kind of liked it after a while, but I had the old wooden skis and all that. And but I pursued it and trained and, you know, I had coaches and I was like, wow, I'm pretty good at this, you know. Next thing you know, I made the U.S. team and they were giving me my own equipment. And that to me was the coolest thing in the world. Somebody's giving me something, you know, because we didn't have any money. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I had never knew how I was going to be able to get equipment and just happened. Just like when I got on the U.S. ski team. And then I was like, well, I think I'm going to, you know, go in the Marines and do what I'm going to do in there and blah, blah. And then. You know, and then I did that. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go to this certain college and like got an acceptance letter when I was in the Marine Corps, went to the college I wanted to go to and became a teacher. And, you know, done all these things have happened because they're manifesting. You know, of course, I'm doing the work and you can't manifest things without the physical effort. It doesn't yeah. happen magically. But there is a force that does make those things happen. It helps you. It's there. And it's you. <laughs> yeah. It's you. It's this collective consciousness, this awareness that's inside of us all. Kind of like something buried underneath a computer code, you know, buried deep inside. Mm -hmm. Just watching everything happen, you know, or like a virus. It's like a virus in us. Yeah. It's buried in there. Most people don't even know it's there. And it's just in there waiting, watching, and quiet until it's, you know, until it's, it's discovered, you know? Um, so this is a way you can hack your body, hack yourself, is to be quiet, to be still, to clean out, you know, um, what would it be? To erase your mind every day, just erase everything for a little while. First thing in the morning before you leave to go to work, erase it. Just breathe. Focus on your breathing, on your the air going in and out of your nose. Just just focus all your attention on that and, and nothing else. And then when thoughts start to come into your mind, just be aware of that thought and let it go. And go back to the breathing in your nose. It's that simple. You can do it with your eyes open. You can do it with your eyes closed. Um, sometimes the people do it when they have their eyes closed. If you're not sitting up and you're not in a position where, you know, you're not going to fall asleep, you probably will fall asleep because it relaxes your body. It slows your heart rate down. It lowers your blood pressure, which are all things that meditation does too. I mean, it's very good for not only for your mind, but, um, in your mental, your mental state, it's, uh, good physically for your body mm -hmm. as far as your blood pressure and, um, your heart rate and, and everything. It's amazing. It resets everything. Does it help kind of balance the sympathetic and parasympathetic? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, um, it's our baseline. It really is. The silence inside. When you go into that silence inside, it's always there. 
it's there, like I said, it's there when you're sleeping. How? How do you know? Because you're aware of your dreams. That to me is amazing. That's that, it's not the dream itself, it's that which is aware of the dream, watching the dream. Just like it's watching, kind of looking out your eyes right now, you know, but it's not something that's inside of us. Our bodies are inside of it because there is an overall awareness, an overall thing. And it, you know, and I don't want to go into all the names of what it's been called through thousands and thousands of years, you know. People have been born onto this planet over and over and over again and tried to spread this knowledge to humans. Can you imagine if every person looked at every other person as just being a different version of themselves? If they knew that the thing powering their body is the same thing powering everybody's body, it's the same thing, powering animals, insects, it's, it's, it's life, it's the essence of life, it's consciousness, it's, I'm not gonna bring up the three word, the three letter word, because people get freaked out, yeah. <laughs> but you know, but it's, there's something inside of you and it's, yeah. and you know, and I can tell you this all day after day after day, but you know, what is your own personal experience? Are you aware of your dreams? Are you aware right now? Are you aware of your body? Are you aware of everything? You know, there is this, you have to admit, there is this essence, this something is aware of everything mm -hmm. because it's who we are. It's aware of your thoughts. It's aware of the voice in your head. Like really, who is listening to the, what's listening to the voice in your head? It just, it can't be you because it's a subject object thing, right? Mm -hmm. Subject object. Um, so, that's kind of where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, so it really seems like too, as far as that goes, we're so distracted nowadays because you've got the internet, you've got social media, you've got so many things that distract us. And just sometimes just trying to live in the moment, you're just too distracted to live in the moment and really enjoy those times that you have. And that's the key, presence, living yeah. in the moment. The most important thing we can do, you know, we waste so much of our life thinking about the past, having regrets or, mm -hmm sad that something's gone by people go oh that's a happy memory for me yeah but it's happy but when you really think about it you're sad that it's it can't happen again yeah you know or all our future stuff you know we're either we're the wasting today thinking about the vacation to come or we're worried about something that's you know worried about something happening oh my god i might get sick and die oh my god i might yeah. be unemployed you know you but if you're in the moment right now, it's always perfect. Mm -hmm. you're ne there's, I mean, you can handle anything from the present moment. Yeah. Anything. I mean, what bad is happening right now, right? I'm sitting here with you. The entire world is perfect right now. Mm -hmm. I'm healthy. I feel good. There's nothing wrong in the entire world right here with us right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's stuff going on out there. Yeah. But is it really? <laughs> we yeah. can't see it. Is it really? Yeah. You know, yeah. it disappears and according to quantum physics, it's gone. It's yeah. not even there. It just, once we immerse ourselves back out into the world, yeah, it, we'll see it and it'll, it'll automatically just start being there. Um, I don't, can't remember what the actual physics name of it is, but it's so amazing stuff. I read books about it. It's like, wow. Yeah. A, a, a science book, a physics and science book that actually talks about this awareness that I'm talking about. When I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, one of my good friends is a, is a psychiatrist and a scientist, and I lent him the book. And he was like, oh man, that's really, that's really cool. You know, we both talk about it all the time. You know, um, that, yeah, this is like, this is reality. You know, it, this, this thing that's there all the time. Mm -hmm. and it's the silence inside. It's not even the silence inside your mind. If you just silence yourself, silence your mind, there's silence, but it's the thing that's aware of the silence. Once again, it's a subject-object thing. I hope that's not too deep, but it really is. It's mm -hmm. just you can't be anything that's an object of your awareness, you know, and, and that's a fact. That's, that's like, you know, basic quantum physics. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting stuff. So how has this affected like your relationships and working with your clients? I drop breadcrumbs wherever I go. I try not to freak people out with it. I used to when I got really excited and figured this all out. And I was like, guess who you are? 
guess, guess what? You, uh. And people got really, really upset at first. They're like, because you can't challenge a person's beliefs. No. You yeah. know, that's why I say, don't believe a word I say. Don't believe anything you're hearing here today. Experience it yourself. Look up awareness. There's a, a guy on uh, YouTube who explains it really well. His name's Rupert Spira. Um, S P Y R A. Rupert Spira. No, it's S P Y R A. Spira. And he talks about it in the most simple, basic way. And it's just amazing. This is what Eckhart Tolle talks about. You've heard of Eckhart Tolle? No, no. heard of him? No. Um, many of the big time spiritual teachers talk about this. Um, this is even, uh, there was a, Rumi was a poet from, you know, thousands of years ago. Rumi wrote poems about this, uh, about the awareness and the, the stillness inside and the silence inside and the being in the moment because being in the moment is what it is. That's, that's all we are. I asked somebody the other day, that I was having a conversation, a, a conversation about this with, and um, I said, just tell me one time in your entire life that it hasn't been the present moment. That really freaks people out. Like, I said, has there ever been? And they were like, uh, well, yeah. I go, tell me when that was. When was it not ever the present moment? <laughs> it's always the present moment. Yeah. Time is just an illusion. Mm -hmm. Time is not real. It's always now. Yeah. But your body's getting older and things are decaying and everything's changing. It's all just kind of happening. But it's always just the present moment. And going into deep meditation, you really have that realization. Like you're like, whoa. Like a lot of things just, they'll just come to you mm -hmm. when you go in and start practicing this. But a lot of the videos though, if you just, just Google, you know, awareness, um, I am awareness, what is awareness? Um, any of those, you'll come up with some really, really amazing stuff and it, it will lead you down a really cool rabbit hole. <laughs> it's really <laughs> cool because you just can't stop because who doesn't want to know who they really are? Yeah. You know, who doesn't want to know that they're really not a human? They're beyond that. This is just one, just one thing that we are right now. I went out to um, Arizona a couple years ago to listen at a consciousness convention to Dr. Stephen Greer, who's a big UFO guy. And he's also big into consciousness and, and all that. And so the whole thing with the focus of it was like these beings elsewhere are just different versions of us, same consciousness in them. We can even communicate with them. I mean, I've seen people do it. I've seen orbs show up after a person just stares and looks up into the sky and they ask them to show themselves. I mean, it's amazing. I've done it before. We're all connected. Everything's connected through this consciousness. But he said, basically, in his, in his thing, he just said, consciousness can only experience itself through other things. So it goes through all creatures. It creates everything at the same time that it is everything to experience everything. So essentially, we're creating it all with our mind. You know, your, your senses are creating your whole experience. It's like, so I read the other day too, as somebody was saying, there are, there's one world experience, but there are billions of different separate theaters with different shows going on inside of all these human beings. But the same thing that's underneath the show, the screen, the awareness, is the same exact thing, every single person. And so if you really think about it, I mean, how can anybody say that that's not like real? Like yeah. it's your own experience. Like, yeah, I, I'm aware and there's something, I, I'm aware of all these things. So there's got to be something in me that is aware. Now here's the kicker. All animals, bugs, all those things, so they're aware. We are the only beings on this planet that are aware that we are aware. Yeah. There is only one thing that can be aware of itself. So we just talked before how there is this giant 
something has to be aware of the whole big picture. That thing would be aware that it is aware because it's creating the awareness, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also aware that I'm aware. I'm aware of my body. I'm aware of the moon. I'm aware of this room. I'm aware of my heart beating. I'm aware of my thoughts, but I'm aware that I am aware. So that's very powerful. So Google that. Mm-hmm. I am aware that I am aware. That will bring up some crazy stuff, <laughs> let me tell you, because yeah. that's about as deep as you can go. You know, and, and this stuff even go it's in all the books. Like there's the the Hindu holy book, um, which is probably one of the oldest holy books on this planet, the Bhagavad Gita. And it talks about it, awareness. And even the Bible talks about awareness and the um Parts of, of Islam talk about awareness, and it's really called the self. They even call it this. They go as far to call it the self. The self mm-hmm. is that awareness inside of us that's aware of everything. So would it be the same thing as like qi in uh, traditional Chinese medicine? Yes, it's the same thing. Yeah, qi gong. Yeah, it it's you know the awareness. It's the yeah. same thing. It's the energy that's inside of us. Everybody has it because you're alive. And, you know, when your body, as we know from these past life experiences that are not past life, but the um, near death experiences that people have had, as we know, when the lights are out, you're still home. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're just you're still aware. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it it never goes anywhere. It's the deep sleep. Um, It's just like like, yeah, it's just like going into a deep sleep, you know, Um, and then some people are aware of it and they see the whole thing. And then some people they don't. You know, it's just, I don't know, I don't know, I can't explain any of that. That's not my, that's not my forte. But just what I try and do, though, is pe- to people is just help them. If they, if I think they're ready, I'll drop little bits here and there. And then I'll help them with meditation. And then, um, and then I'll introduce them to awareness. And every person I've ever in- introduced them to, they're like, whoa, that's insane. All of a sudden, their life changes. I have a, a woman that I work with and she's had a couple strokes. She was having a real tough time in life because she can't work. She has aphasia where she has trouble getting her thoughts out and speaking. And besides the physical part of training, I worked with her, I work with her on uh, meditation because I wanted her to be able to control her emotions and not get in trouble because she was actually getting arrested in places because she'd get in conflicts with people because of her inability to express herself or situations would get out of a hand in, in, in the store even. So I wanted to help her with that and so I taught her about the awareness. I taught her who she really is and she has a lot of time to really reflect on what we've discussed and the things and the things I've um, given her to practice and she told me the other day she's been like two months now every single day she's been happy for no reason now to me there's nothing better than that mm-hmm. who wouldn't be want to ha- be happy no matter what's happened to her yeah she's still happy all the time because when you realize hey I'm not just this puny little human struggling to survive there's a way bigger story here it really makes you want to find it. It makes you want to search it out. Mm-hmm. They call it's why they call people trying to find this stuff, and some of them don't even know they're trying to find this. They just know they're trying to find something. They call them seekers. Mm-hmm. You become a spiritual seeker, and a lot of times it happens when people crash. They go, "There's got to be something more to this life than just buying stuff and eating and pooping." And going to work and trying mm-hmm. to survive. There's got to be a bigger purpose to it. And and that's what hit me after my my experience where I literally, you know, almost didn't come back to this planet. I was like, there has got to be something more to this story. And I've seen too many of my friends, you know, die now from all of our years in bodybuilding. Actually, most of my friends are gone now. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I have a few friends that are um that are still here but a lot of them are gone you know because of the things they did to their body their deaths hit me hard too i was like why am i still here why did i make it and they died like just crazy stuff i'm like man back those years years ago hanging out with them and training and all that 
I never once thought, man, I'll be the le- the lone survivor out of everybody I know. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and there's still a lot of other people here too that are alive, but a lot, most of them are gone. And it just made me start thinking there has got to be a bigger a bigger purpose to all this. And that's what happens. A lot of people have a lot of what's called the dark night of the soul, or they have something that really just crashes down on them in their life. And they just start to ask the question, who am I? You know, what is, what is this all about? And so they'll start, you know, going to church more, or they'll just, yeah. and they, there's so many different ways people try and figure it out. And I think a lot of the ways lead people away from the truth instead of actually moving them towards the truth. And you can't find this out by reading about it. You can, you know, that can point you in the right direction. But the only way that this really works is you have to work on yourself. You have to do the work. And you ha- it's really tough at first to quiet your mind, to get rid of the thoughts, to be peaceful. But once it starts to take hold of you, you don't want to let it go. You just want to kind of stay there all the time. And that's kind of where I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm able to hold it longer and longer and longer and stay there longer. But the realization that I have had 100% is that I know by my experience that I am not this body, that this body is going to die. It could die any day. I don't know. It can happen to any of us. You know, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. It does not bother me one single bit. I have faced death before in the Marines. I faced it in that experience there. And I'm facing it every single day when I walk around. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm not worried about it because I know that this body is not the real me. The the real me is the thing inside of me that has not ever changed in my entire life. And it's there when I'm asleep. And it's there when I'm awake. And it's there when I'm in a deep sleep. It's always there. It's always watching, it's always observing. But the only way that I can be in touch with it is to quiet my mind and to be silent and to just go to that place where there's no noise, it's the stillness. There's a saying, and I'm gonna bring it, I will say it, it's in the Bible. Mm. Be still and know that I am God. Most people do not know what that means. Be still. Be still doesn't mean sit still, Mm -hmm. even though that helps. It means quiet your mind, be silent inside, you know, and then, and that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all through all the books, all the holy books. They all talk about that same thing. Be still, be quiet, silence, you know, and, um, especially working in tech. I know guys get their brains going, man. They're just, you know, going crazy working on the computers and programs and and, on all that and it gets hard to to kind of let it all go yeah disconnect disconnect shut shut down from it yeah Yeah, exactly so anyways that's how i do it you know i've I've, um do it with clients and people i just have to be really careful you know i don't want to offend anybody i'm not gonna i'm not trying to change anybody's beliefs and like i said don't believe anything i've said Look it up yourself and find out your own truth. Yeah. You know, someone else's truth is not my truth. This is my truth. That's, you know, figure that's what you want to hear. You want to hear my truth. I'm not going to, you know, say anything that, that, to offend anybody or, you know, but just notice how you are aware all the time. There's something very special about that. That's really what I, all I that's the most important thing I can say. Yeah. That alone should trigger a person. Like, you know what? He's right. I am. I am aware all the time. And just ask yourself to see what it's like. Just say, am I aware? And go there. There's a silence. Mm -hmm. And that silence is the same thing that when you look at something that you perceive to be beautiful. Notice I said you perceive to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Something that you see and I see as beautiful are two different things. Yeah. A lot of times we'll see something and a lot of people will agree, wow, that's beautiful. And a lot of people think it's beautiful because all the other people think it's beautiful and they want to just think like that. Mm -hmm. But really, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And this is what this means. It's all perception. But when I see something that I think is beautiful, my mind is silent. It's empty. I don't have a billion thoughts going through my mind when I'm appreciating something that's beautiful that I consider to be beautiful. Now, you might look at that same thing and be thinking to yourself, that sucks. That's ugly. 
Oh my God. <laughs> well, therefore you've just cut off. So beauty is not actually the thing. It is the experience of being silent in your mind. Same thing when you listen to a song you like. Real beautiful music. This is why classical music is kind of like a more spiritual kind of music. It's considered. Mm -hmm. Because when you listen to it, your mind is quiet. It's more quiet. Yeah. You're not thinking. You're listening to the music. You're appreciating. Your mind is silent. That's why they call it beautiful. They mm -hmm. don't call rock music beautiful. Yeah. It's rock music. Yeah, and it's the same you know? reason people listen to some of the metal or whatever they, their genre of music when they're wanting to get psyched up for a big lift. Exactly. Yeah, you're yeah. getting excited. You're getting. You don't want to be silent not, then, man. You're not relaxing <laughs> and trying to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the same silence. It's the same thing when you look at a person that you really, really love, and you're speechless, and you just want to just soak them in. There's silence. That silence is the essence of who we are, mm -hmm. and it's the same. And, it, and just try this in your own personal experience. Be aware. Just say, am I aware? It's the same experience when you're aware as when you're looking at something beautiful or someone that you love or listening to music that you like and you're not thinking. It's the same experience, and every single human being has that experience, but probably only one in every 50 million even think about it. Mm -hmm. So I hope after our conversation today, people will, you know, maybe think about that. Yeah. Let's look up awareness. Look up, look up, I am aware, say I am awareness and type it into the computer and see what happens. See what comes up. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And I promise it will change the way you look at life. It will change everything. Like you may not even, like it's changed what I want to do for the rest of my life, understanding this and, the, the, and it's because I'm experiencing it. It's not just words to me because mm -hmm. words don't mean anything. It's about the experience of it. There's nothing, I, no, more, no more than I can possibly read for the rest of my life to make me understand any of this anymore. Mm -hmm. I understand it 100%. Now I'm trying to realize it. Now I'm trying to because we're so deeply programmed in our minds from our childhood that it takes such a long and arduous road to get to the place where you become to a point where you completely realize this. And that's what they call enlightenment. When all the wrapping is off the onion, the whole, you're just, all the layers are stripped down and all of a sudden a light bulb goes off and it's like, bing, I get it. I get it 100%. And you can't go back from there. Like you see the oneness in everything. Like that's mm -hmm. all of a sudden at that moment, like you know that you are everybody and everything. Then there's only one being. And then that's that awareness. You can call it any name you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any name you want. There's a lot of them too, man. There's a lot of names for it. It's all the same thing. It's that awareness inside of you. And they even talk about, oh, the spirit's inside of you. And most people don't even know what they're talking about. You can, like, that's what it is. That's this, this knowingness, this beingness, this life inside of you is that awareness because it's always there. It's mm -hmm. never changing. Can you ever think of a time when you've not been inside of there or aware or in the moment? It's that. That's what it is. It's actually, it's the moment too. So, anyways. Well, very interesting. It's something I've been interested in for a while, so it's got me even more eager to, to check into it. One of my former coworkers at this a uh, security technology company I used to work for, he used to meditate. We were at conferences and he'd go out every morning outside and, and meditate. And he was just saying how it's been life changing for him. Yeah, he was a very absolutely. productive and successful person in the type of work he was doing. Yeah, well, that's good. I yeah. appreciate you uh, appreciate you letting me uh, come on and, and talk about it sure. and kind of put that out there. To the yeah, world. it's awesome. And, and, and thanks for sharing that because one of the things like in cybersecurity, people are realizing that they need to need the self-care, they need to take care of their mental health, and so I think this will be helpful to people. Absolutely. Well, thanks. Appreciate you joining today. Thank you, Philip. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to The Philip Wiley Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. In the meantime, to learn more about Philip, go to thehackermaker.com and connect with him on LinkedIn and Twitter at Philip Wiley. Until next time.